Getting water on the fire in the shortest possible time depends on teamwork and coordination between a pump operator and his helper. They must understand each other and work together. A routine hookup is easy. What is more important is to learn to anticipate and be prepared to cope with unusual conditions that require modifications in spotting procedures. A problem like this may be handled by moving the obstruction or by using two suctions under the parked car if curb does not interfere or a round car. hydrant may be out of reach of a single suction. In this situation, hard and soft suctions used together may do the trick. But if the distance from hydrant to pump requires, a section of hose may be used as a suction, or a soft suction together with a section of hose or bypass. On the other hand, if conditions require spotting too close, a good trick is to put a half twist in the suction. And the result will look something like this. When taking a two and a half by four hydrant, it is good practice to connect to the four inch outlet. At any double hydrant, spot in such a manner as to leave the second outlet clear for another pumper. Couplings will last longer if the suction hose is resting on the ground or supported in some manner to relieve the strain. And if damage to couplings and threads is prevented. If an apparatus carries suction connected to a rear intake, or others preferring a front connection, this could happen. Recovery can be made by extending line with a bypass or a section of hose. Although a meter pot hookup may take several minutes, it may be the only source of water supply. ditch, a gutter, or a storm drain may be the only means of getting water from a remote hydrant to within drafting reach of a pumper. When spotting for draft, get as close to the water as possible with safety. Conditions encountered will determine whether a front, rear, or side connection should be made. However, a side connection which enters the pump in the direction of the rotation of the impellers may enable a pump to deliver considerably more water. The pump's ability to deliver its rated capacity is determined by a test with the pumper at draft through an adequate suction at lifts not to exceed 10 feet. In practice, higher lifts are commonly encountered and four inch suctions are used. They definitely limit the amount of water that can be delivered. By using a second set of four inch suctions, the amount of water that can be delivered is almost equal to that which can be obtained by using a single set of six inch suctions. When drafting, consideration must be given to height of lift, depth of water supply, reduced capacity of pumps working at maximum lifts, and to tide actions in the harbor. Since we don't have the advantage of hydrant pressure, the pump must first be primed by various procedures determined by the type of apparatus. The most effective vacuum is created at low engine speeds. 
priming device doesn't discharge water within 30 seconds, stop and look for leaks. Be sure all drain cocks are closed, all discharge gates are closed. Suction hose couplings and suction caps are tight. Getting water and keeping it is the secret of drafting. Before disengaging priming pump, make sure there is a good discharge stream. Then open discharge gates slowly. Increase pump pressure gradually. Watch pressure gauges so as not to run away from water. After any kind of hookup has been completed, every effort should be made to determine whether hose lines are in position before delivering water. The pump operator's helper can assist in determining the proper time to charge a working line. A practical signaling system is desirable for this purpose. Loading lines prematurely is poor teamwork. It results in a lot of extremely hard work for firemen and certainly causes unnecessary delay in getting water on a fire. The good pump operator knows the controls and piping for booster tank operation, whether it's through main pump or independent booster pump. When working from booster tank through main pump, it may be necessary to use the priming pump or wait until main pump fills by gravity with discharge gate open. A pump control panel may look like something out of a Buck Rogers cereal, but it's only a tool to make the job of a pump operator easier and more accurate. Another tool used to change from a hydrant stream to a pump stream is the four-way valve. The winged female swivel is attached to the hydrant. Discharge line is attached to either male outlet. When the hydrant is opened, water will flow in this direction. Pumps take suction from the male outlet and discharge into the female inlet. Shifting the control lever changes the direction of flow without the necessity of shutting down a working line. The trick when the suction intake is on the wrong side for a good hookup is simply to turn the valve over, since it works equally well in any position. A Gleason valve is used to reduce the high pressures encountered at some hydrants, on high pressure tap-ins, or in relay pumping operations. The indicator should be set at the desired pressure before starting the flow of water. Water discharging from the overflow indicates there's sufficient water to maintain the pressure selected. An immediate shutdown can be made by simply cracking this emergency pet cock. After shutting down, a discharge line can be bled by opening this bleeder valve. And the oil hole you see here is for lubricating the piston.